uh, hi everyone welcome back so this is the part two of our previous video previous video was part one where we did the basic uh, api implementation now in this video we are going to uh, build the front end part in the last video we were able to build the simple apis so here we were doing a simple apis like api uh, auth login and register we have created Okay, these are the two APIs which is being handled by the pre, uh, the next JS routes, and uh, they were reading and writing the data in in the using Prisma to the SQLite. So this is what we have done. Now the next thing is doing a logout and creating the components using these React hook forms and doing the validations and submitting the data, and then managing the sessions at the client end side. Like uh, because from the login we are sending the cookies. And that cookie is, uh, is handled at the client end side. So, if I show you how we were able to, we were doing it. So, this was our login API, right? We were able to get these cookies inside this header, header you can see. These are the cookies we were receiving. Now, it's all about building the components and doing the integration. So, let's get started with that. So in this video, we are using all these tools, Next.js, React, Prisma, and SQLite, and is this all these things are being done in the monorepo. You can check the last video, it has everything. Now we are just continuing on top of that. So we now we need to build the logout because we already have a login logout, and we will be building the login register and the profile routes, okay, profile pages. And inside a logout, what we are going to do is simply, okay, well, what will happen when you do the logout? Our, our cookies will set to the max is minus one, and cookies values will be become empty a simple route uh, there is no logic no rocket science a simple route now so this is our simple api auth logout that will just set the cookies to empty with max is minus one this was our register route which we have created this was our login and we have tested end to end all these things now we are going to focus on how we are going to use uh, the hooks forms react hook forms uh, library and how we are going to manage a simple tiny store which manages okay all these activity happening on this okay so let's get started uh, how we are going to do is we are going to build all these components api we have done now this login form we are going to build register form we are going to build with all the validations using react hook forms so here inside this profile we are going to create some other components like login form.tsx similarly there is a register form we have here register form and the login form okay now this is login form register form and here we have a component so inside a components we are going to create a simple header i mean it's all about demo so we will not be worried about our uh, the styling and all those things so inside header component so here we can just create a simple header component const header i will try to zoom the code a little bit so this is visible so we are going to create a simple header component for the next js app i have already shown you the demo app, demo app how it looks like so we are just going to follow the same header and then simple login form sign up form and a profile so there are three or four pages we have okay now uh, we also going to use store and i'm going i'm trying a simple library for that so let's say the header is simple what do we have inside header is uh, just a simple navbar and here we are providing a simple login logout buttons so we also have a logout action that we are going to add here and it is going to return a simple JSX. Right. So inside this we can have simply and inside this we are going to create a header layout. Okay. So it's a simple header class name is BG White. Height is 20. We are already using Tailwind, so that can help us in uh, building this simple new bar. So there is a new tag, class name, height full. Okay, and then it is a flex, flex container. Justify between because all the links will be and it is going to use container. Item center. Uh, 
items center okay and inside this this is like your header and then uh, i mean you can just put some branding if you want and then here after the nav tag inside the nav tag there is a first div is the branding so here we can just use the class name brand up uh, and after this we have another tag ul ally and which contains all the links so here i do have a new class name which is flex items center and the gap is four between each and every flex items and then there is a ally tag okay and the ally tag means all the links we have i think i don't need so many classes this is autocomplete text okay so this is ul ally and inside ally i will have a link because we use a link directive in uh, next link so this sign that specify href this is how we create a links forward slash that is for home and class name it's happening with this okay something wrong with this inside class name i will just specify what is the text a 50 or whatever you wanted to put and we will also try to see how we can customize this tailwind behavior you can actually customize themes lots of thing you can do so this is just like a home screen and then uh, we also need to know on the header does the user session exists right for now i will just add a register and the login but what we are going to do is we will also try to know if user session exist then only we will try to show the links okay now we'll just format this document because we need to show the login and register only when user session doesn't exist so we are going to play with a little bit on the store and here there is another link which is all about profile and logout so these things we need to show when user is not logged in and there are two other links which we need to show if user is there so inside ally we can just show the profile that is a simple header which you see for the demo and then there is a ally we don't need a link it can be simple logout class name cursor pointer And when you do on click, what we'll do is we will add the logout. Okay, and then I will just say okay, this is a logout action, and we have already have defined a logout here, and then we can just do export default logout. So we export default header component. Now we need to work on the store also because <clears throat> store is important. That will tell us okay that uh, user session exists or not, right? Here inside in this logout, we are going to have a simple API that will going that is going to log out the user by calling a logout because we already have a logout handler. Here you can see we have defined this logout API which is setting the resetting the cookies. So we need to have a mechanism to trigger that. Okay, so and we also need to know how we can capture the user data okay so it's all client side how we can create a uh, providers and all to populate the user data in the client side objects client side components and all these things are happening at use client so that is important right because this is client of the component okay so now let's work on the store and how we can populate the session at the client side that is really important so here let's work on our store folder which is inside app so here is our store what i will do is i will just create an index.ts file this is all client only because what we are doing inside the store is just writing it because state management always happen at the client side so i will just try to see the documentation how we use this library so how we are going to import this from so 
what we need is we need to call create get the instance of create and then first of all let's define the store type of the store so this is like custom type i have created so it contains auth user which is of initially null and it you can define all the the setter methods to set this auth user so loading is currently boolean and then set auth user so you will get a user object which can be of type let's say any but we will define a user type so here we are just creating a type so void then set request loading when you wanted to show the loading behavior is loading uh, is of type boolean and that's also going to return that's type return is loading so we are creating a types and then there is a reset reset is a method okay this is the type and now we are going to create a store so how we do it user store equal to create so if you have already used it then it's very good otherwise you can learn it it's really very tiny library and really nice i will say you should use it it exposes the set method inside a callback set method and you can play around with this so what all you have is auth user so okay it should return something right so what how we do it is return auth user is initially null then request loading which is initially false and then we have set auth user this is the method which is going to take user as an input of type any and then it is going to use this set to update the user inside our state so this is my current state and what would be my new state after this this is my state and then auth user is auth user is user and then similarly i can define all the other methods set request loading and all set request loading okay i think the comma is missing so it's like a really tiny library what we did is we are just calling this set method to create the new state right it's all like these are the methods it is exposing and this is the state we need to maintain so this is the like initial state when you call these methods from your client only components you can set the state and we can access that through the store what you can just do is export default uh, user store that's it so this is your store is ready and how we can use it let's talk about how the the uses of this in our header component so inside component we have header and here i can just uh, use it so how we do it const store equal to use store that is coming from this library we use store do i need to pass the apis so this is a huge store coming from store library so this is wrong this we already have created a store library from So this is inside a lib store user store we have created okay so user store will give us the store and then we need to find a way how we can manage the session also in the application okay so we are using use store now what we are going to do is let's create a use session so use session is just like another hook that will just uh, be used to fetch the session so here inside the lib we can create a simple use session dot tsx and that is like a hook and that hook we can use in any of the components to fetch the user data okay so it's going to be export default export default function because it's a custom hook use session and what this function will do is it will use the store so how we can access the store we can use store from store library so store library which we have created and here inside this we can return another function async function 
choose the fetch user we are going to do with the help of api so it will be try catch so because here we are going to make an api call and if user exists because if session exists that means it has the cookies we can make the api call here we will do is call user equal to submit here we need to write an api handler for the client only components and how it works is uh, here we can make something like api get auth user that we can define inside our api requests so api request is nothing but uh, a simple you can say utility that we can use to make the api call to the next js api routes api request so all these apis like sign in sign up all these will go through this okay and how we do it is first we will define server and point that we can get from process dot .pnv dot server and point if it is not available that means we are going to use http and local post 3000 okay so this is our server api endpoint and then we can have a sync function handle response this is just like a generic um, uh, method we are going to use and apart from that we are going to make all these functions and uh, export a sync function api register user similarly there will be another methods so for now we are talking about uh, profile user right how to get the auth user so for that also we can just create another function api get auth user get auth user and that takes token as a string and it is going to return us the promise of any for now we'll just create a type that it should be all written written type should be promise of user and here we are going to create headers headers is of type record string string because what is the type of header record of type string comma string key and value is a string here and here i can say content type content type is application json okay we are going to hit the api if token is there because token is an optional argument here if token you are passing then we can just set the headers authorization token authorization equal to here we will just set it as a bearer token so we got the token and we can just use the fetch api so post response fetch inside fetch api what do we need we need to pass a server endpoint server endpoint and the server endpoint api so there is an endpoint we need to write api users me so this endpoint we haven't created i guess so what we need to do is we need we will just create uh, this endpoint what this will do is this will just give you the current logged in user still the api implementation is not complete like how we can protect the apis uh, api here we also need to create a middleware so inside api uh, we can create uh, the user folder inside user uh, we need to just define the route api user so here we are going to create routes.ts so let's finish the, the remaining part from the api side here we can just copy some part of it because here we are going to define the handler body part we can just make the empty okay what happened next server app auth user so this is inside api user routes.ts okay this is the missing piece import and now what we need to do here 
so we are going to write a middleware so how the flow is looks like i will try to explain it in the simple words once you are logged in right once you are logged in or then what you do is you will go to the middleware this is the next js middleware it will validate your token and inside the error this is your token right and this is your token so we already have a middleware that will validate it and once you are logged in what we just do is we are going to attach request dot user equal to the user id or the other way of doing it it's not a express TypeScript. we can just create a custom header like x api user in the middleware and we just assign a user id to it that will be done by middleware so if you are hitting anything api user that means you are trying to access the protected information in that case we will just check okay you have a valid token coming in the the authorization then if token is valid we will just assign x api user with the user id and then you can access your protected api routes it can be done in different 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 possible ways this is just a one way of doing it so here what we can do is we can just try to access okay what is the the user ID. are we getting that header that is user id that we are getting from request dot headers and here we can access that using x user id we just need to have a consistent name so we can use it everywhere request dot headers dot get it should be so it won't throw any error okay this is our token if user id is not there so everything is happening through the middleware it's not like okay i am just checking user id and anybody can populate a user id the middleware will populate this user id and then only all these things will happen if that is true then we will do it otherwise what we will do we got the user id so we are going to access the prisma await prisma prisma dot user dot find unique because we are trying to find based on uh, user id that is already unique so here we are saying id is user id so it will give you the user object and here in the response now i need to just send the response back status this and here i can customize the response okay this is a property which i'm sending back that contains the user object and password i will set and defined so this is just a way of uh, returning the user and once you have the token available at the client side you can use this call to fetch the currently logged in user now we'll go to our lib where we are doing a use session so inside use session we are just going to make this call through the api requests so here inside api requests we are fetching the information response this is the the endpoint now with the endpoint we need to pass the other attribute what is the method method is get and you can also set we, we need to set that send the headers also and then return what we need to return handle response because we are going to call the handle response with uh, this response object which we just received and it is going to return us the promise if data then data dot data dot user data dot user i will just try to check what is the type we are getting so handle response is just another method which we are writing so handle response is going to check uh, all the properties everything is coming back or not so we will see what is the response we are getting so if you look into the api what do you see here in the response object there is a object contains the data that contains the user object right so in the response dot data dot data just think about it because you need to consider the structure your response object contains this thing inside that you have a status and uh, data so response dot data dot data this is how you will get the data 
so we can just create uh, these interface i can just try to create these types so it's good that we have should have a typescript types.ts which contains okay this is the user any okay user response api requests and if we see what we are doing with the api request this handle response will take a response object response object which is of type response the response and it is going to return me the promise promise of type any we can just do some generics because now we have a const uh, because it's a generic message right uh, we need to just see how to stringify how to parse this message because it's a fetch call right so const content type content type we are getting is response dot headers dot get content type I mean just for safe we can just do this otherwise content type is application JSON these are the rest APIs we are writing if it is not there it's a string empty const are we getting in SQL JSON object is JSON so content type dot include content type dot includes and here I'm saying is is it application JSON? It's like uh, just a handler which we have to write. If data is there, what how we need to fetch it? If it is a JSON object, then we need to do await response dot uh, JSON again. This is how the fetch works, right? We need to do await response dot JSON to get the data. Otherwise, if let's say if it is a text response, then how you do it? Await response dot text i mean we generally don't do it but this is how it really works based on the content type now here you can just check if response dot okay because first you get the response which tells you what is the status code and if a json is there and data dot errors errors not equal equal to null then we can simply throw throw new error and here we can just do a json dot stringify data dot errors okay simple if uh, nothing happens then it's obviously if the content type is not json but still there is an error we will do it and then finally we can return the data okay so the it's like handle response will be called by this which is going to return us the data and then we have data inside data dot data dot user data dot data dot user so get api auth user we are going to call from this session get api auth user is it get api auth user so we just called it so what this thing will do is it is going to give us the data this is the user object actual user object what we can do now is we can just set this inside a store store dot set of user and we already got the user object so we will just set it if there is an error then store dot reset that means token has expired or something we need to just clear out the user object which is already there okay and this is a us, then we can just call use use us use effect api hook to trigger this fetch user api call i mean who will call this fetch user in this custom hook we need to find a way to do it right so if store dot store dot auth user is not there then we need to make this call because uh, user doesn't exist there and we can just pass the dependencies empty so it's a like one time call and if it is there then we just call store dot dot auth user so it's like a custom hook we have created and what this custom hook is checking if store doesn't contain auth user call this fetch user which is using this async api call 
to fetch the data put the data inside a redux sorry this uh, our store so that our component can use it and what this is returning this is returning currently logged in user so inside header so we have our header component right inside header we will go inside our header component component header.tsx here we can use the this logic how we are doing it if you see our code inside our header component so inside our header component we can access this data using const user equal to use session which we have created that's it now if user is there right if user is there then do this otherwise if user is there then just show the profile and log out otherwise do some and here if you are doing trying to log out and we will do something else we uh, can define this api request await uh, how we do it uh, so whenever you are doing any api call first of all we can just do this store dot set request loading equal to true in any api call from the component clients only component and then api logout user this is the method we are going to write and then if uh, everything is good we can just do the finally and then what finally does is we can just say the store dot reset because you did the logout we need to reset the store and then router so here we also going to use the router so i do have access to the router which is the next router we can import this next router and we can do is router dot push or router dot push login because you did, did a logout i need to send you the login screen simple forward slash login and here if there, there is a catch still we need to reset uh, i mean we don't need to reset we don't need to do anything if, if you want you can just log it is the error console dot log error i mean i'm not able to log out and await api log out so this should be async function async log out await api log out user do we have this method or will we have to create it api log out user inside api request so here we will define this support async function log out user api log out user and what, what will happen with the api log out user we are going to make the api call same api call which we are doing here and because it's all about sending the we already have a token okay so we just need to make this api call api logout user so here api auth logout api auth logout method is get and headers you can say content type content type is application json okay and uh, this is how you can just uh, we don't need to deal with anything because it's a simple logout which we are doing so now it is complete the header component okay now what we need to do we just need to write a login logout form and need to test this end to end before that we also need to write this middleware at the server side so this is our component lib inside app we are going to create uh, this middleware.ts inside source i can just create this because the thing is it should not be empty otherwise uh, next js will complain about it okay so we'll write the method like what uh, this is a simple middleware so here it should look like this export async function async function middleware and it will take some params of some type so what it happens is it takes a request of next request and then inside this you will be doing some stuff right like when to forward the request and when to uh, just do some validations on the request object if everything is go good then only we will allow user to move forward so it's like uh, same as express middleware we used to write it's like a simple same thing we have to handle here like check the cookies cookies contains the token then if token is there then validate 
the token using JWT dot verify if token is correct then only allow user to just just set the header and just redirect set the header and then allow user to forward otherwise what we need to do is we need to just throw the error if something is not right we can just return the response with the status code from here only okay so that we will do in uh, that that we can complete so this is the middleware apart from that we just need to build these components login profile logout register okay so let's let's proceed further before that i will just uh, do a quick overview like uh, what all we have built we already have these all these different routes which is login register and logout okay so what we are going to do now is uh, from here this is the client only component from here we are going to send a requests so next is provides uh, two different kind of components server components so these all are the server api routes right these are server api routes and then there are some pages also or pages for routes which is like okay the login route which is going to address the page login register and then profile and then there is a home page like port slash default all these are server side components which are going to render these uh, small react components okay so when you are going to trigger a request you will be either loading the forward class profile login and register okay so when the request goes at the next js side there is also a middleware which we are going to register okay what is the use of this middleware is middleware will always take care of okay what you are sending in the request uh, let's say what is going to take care is whenever you are going to send a request from the client only component client side components okay i'm doing a login register and profile then uh, this middleware will validate let's say you are fetching the profile this is a protected route so middleware will, will, will validate that you are passing the token in the authorization header or not if yes then it will just uh, append the xapi user onto the request object and will send those requests to the api routes so there are all these different uh, api routes there is another api routes which we have api which is user i think that's it api user and me something like that so just api user so these are different api routes these are all the api routes and these are the pages routes these are going to enter the server side pages and when you are sending the request it will always get processed through the middleware and in the client side so all these is this is server side if you just think about what we are doing server side all of these is server side even just uh, integrating with the prisma and talking all this is server side the client side is only these sub components because what happens is these are my client components so the, when you hit a forward slash login this login is going to render another client component which is a login form login form component and it is going to use a simple store a state management so we are just we can manage only a store or the the state inside only client only component so it contains the the store which shows okay the api call is being made this is my auth data and all but for uh, for fetching the auth data also you are you are making a call from these client only components so there is always uh if i talk about the client side what do we have all this is here so here we have a huge session hook i just try to write it so here we have a huge session hook that is just making a call if you have token then that is making a call to this api interface and it is going to return as the user and we will have the, the data available inside this store the auth data once you have auth data you can just show that auth data on the, the profile page and on the front end side you can just show and hide things that's the only thing because client side state doesn't much matter much here because this application is totally server side rendered so when you hit a forward slash login all the the data will be all the checks will be happening in the middleware that are you logged in do you have a session if session exists 
through the middleware the middleware will just forward you to the profile page if you are at the profile page and you hit reload then all the data is going to be fetched from the server side so client side state is only just uh, uh, putting this uh, auth profile data user profile data in the simple store that can be just used to show and hide things on the front end side so here we have lots of things like login form then there is a register form and then there is a profile page component so there is a profile page right for from or for all these components we are going to access the data from the store I mean we need to we need to just check okay does the session exist and what are the values in this session and this store will be populated using use session hook and use session hook is going to make a call to the api on every page route handler it is going to fetch the data from this api call which here you are sending a token and when you send a token i can just fetch my profile data okay this is pretty much the overall structure of our simple app application let's proceed further we will build a login form sign up form and the profile page and this middleware these are the four remaining pieces for the overall application so let's look at our components so this is the api now we can just check our root layout and the root page which is going to be published on the forward slash so this is our page.tsx here we have some section okay a basic html snippet we can add last name and we can add some body background like 600 i mean this is like the main page main right screen and let's hit top 20 and inside this section this is like a flex column justify center and here we can just show a message message is nothing but uh, let's add some classes for this class name text 3xl this is going to be a large text okay text is center so text center and font what font you wanted to use font semi bold and and I'm just going to show a simple welcome message. Welcome to demo app or whatever the message you wanted to show. Okay, this is your simple uh, home page. Here we also going to render the header because header will always be there. So we have created a header component. We can render it here header component yes this is the header component which i want so this is our top header component and this is the top home page and this is the layout we inside a layout we are rendering all the children's okay so this is our root layout and inside this root layout this is our top page and inside global css we are importing all the tailwind utilities this is the tailwind classes we have now we will start adding things inside a login profile and register so first of all profile so what do we uh, need inside our profile page first of all this is a server side page server side page means we are not going to use use client at all because it's all top page so export first let's define this what it is going to do export default async function page and inside profile page what we are going to do is we are going to first check okay user logged in or not otherwise uh, it's all going to return the profile information and here we can render the header component top header component which we have created earlier and inside this we can have a section and it will have some classes class name let's say the bz blue 600 we have background blue i mean edge screen so this is mean edge 
screen padding top 20 okay and inside this section we can have a div let me just see what we need to put here because this is a profile page right so i can just show a simple uh, div section same as the home page and i can just show the basic profile information right so inside these p tags first of all let's call it as a profile page and inside this i will start showing okay what all profile information i have about the user so do class name margin top 8 and here inside the p tags so we have multiple p tags and we can have all the classes class name or padding top or margin bottom 3 all these information like what is the id here we need to fetch the user so where the user will come from that is important it's a server side component we cannot pick the data from the redux store okay so how we will, we are going to get first of all we are going to get cookie store cookie data from cookies so this is all server side so we are going to get cookies from next headers okay this is how we can get the cookies so once you get cookies you can get the from the cookies so cookies store dot get token so this is how you can access the cookies in the server side components and then i can just do const user and you already know if i have the cookies how can i get the data api get auth user and i can just get token dot value that's it so you got the user object once you have the user object what all you can do you can just show the information about the user user ID. and you know this is a server side component so it doesn't have access to the store we need to fetch the user data on the fly like on the page load we will be making api call if user session exists it will allow us to fetch the data and also we will be checking the middleware thing okay first of all middleware will allow you to access the profile page only if your session exists dot role and all the basic this is our profile route and apart from that you have a loading so loading can be just a spinner component we can create a simple spinner component inside our component there is a spinner so here we will just do create these components and then we will import these components in our loading components so here how do we do this on spinner this is react how do we do the typings react.fc and this is like a simple component okay this is like uh, props which it is passing and then it is returning some jsx okay and then once you are done with this spinner sort default spinner component this is how we create a functional component i mean just i'm just adding this react fc types and we can also create the the props which we have to pass to this component sp i double n r spinner props these are all our spinner props I'm going to pass, like the width. That is because width is optional, that is of type string. So all these uh, different properties I'm going to pass to the spinner component. And then here this component is taking spinner props, right? This is how we specify spinner props. And here you can just override it. If you're not passing, then width will be. 1.25 rem and all the other options width and height all the default options and then you can have some kind of svg and then you can dynamically pass some of these colors to that okay so that i'm doing i already have that svg i will just put that in the return statement so this is svg, SVG will do that and here we are using simple tailwind merge 
which allows us to merge the styles okay so this is my spinner component this spinner component i can just import them everywhere so uh, how would i create a default stop which i copy everywhere export default function loading right same component i will copy on all the places where we have this kind of a loading state division class name okay what do we need to put uh because it is also going to be a full screen loading this is flex item center justify center background slate 100 okay inside that we can have another view which contains another class names okay class name height 20 like what is the actual height and width of the spinner which we are going to allow and it's rounded md rounded md shadow md flex item center and uh, what is the background background white okay as simple all these classes and then said that i'm going to hit spinner spinner we already created spinner component and here i can just specify what is my height what is my width because this is a reusable component you we have created which i can use anywhere okay and now this loading component i can just use everywhere loading login profile and register loading and then there is an error component error component is simple which we can use everywhere the same these all are the client only components so there is a loading error component and page components so page component is something which is being fetched from the server side right all our server components like profile here we are going to uh, render the register and login form also and then what they are going to import right so the register component will import the register form register form will be use client that will use a use client here because it's all happening at the client side register form and the login form okay but this this is a server component page.tsx page.tsx and this page.tsx so let's write a simple login form we are going to use uh, react hook forms and then we'll just copy the same implementation to the login uh, to the register form okay page.tsx so first of all this is our page.tsx it's a server side component go to the login page.tsx so it's export default async function and this is the log okay inside this we are going to simply return some gsx and now because every component has the same layout so the topmost component will be our header header component and after that uh, you will just define okay what you want to show in the login like simple demo or something like that so i will just copy and paste that stuff i already have it so that is a simple section because it's the same as the home profile page so simple and we are just going to create a login form component so it's a export default so it's a login form component we are creating export default function login form right and then there is a the register form component and we are importing it in the same way login here this is a login form we can import so this is how our login form and the register pages looks like here also we can do the same thing here it will be register form instead of this and I will import register form. Okay, simple. Register, you can just sign up. I 
it's not accepting export default register form and here register form okay it should be returning from vsx then it will allow us okay now it's good so this is register form this is a login form inside login form also do something like this return some empty jsx and it will allow you to import okay now we are going to work on login form and the register form okay so now let's work on this login form here we are going to use uh, react hook forms that is the library to validate uh, i mean just to do some simple validations and make form really powerful you can just try to see this thing react hook forms and i have used it uh, a lot i'll just try to show the demo like how it really works we can just use it simply like this on submit you are going to get uh, I will try to find uh, the nice implementation okay this will work so there is a use form hook and this is how you can capture the data from each and every input text field and when you submit it you will get the data so use form react form hook so on submit so all these methods you are getting from register handle submit you are getting from the form component so let's try to use some of those concepts so this is the login form component here we can get the store first of all because this is the client only component so we can access the store here use store coming from our store component store library and we are going to use router also here because once user is logged in successfully we are going to redirect user to the profile page okay and then here because we are going to use react hook forms we can get all the methods for the form fields like handle submit all these are going to come from methods and all these methods will be coming from our uh, use form method const method and this is use form okay it's not don't we have react hook forms so use form is coming from react hook form okay let's try to add it npm add react hook forms i thought it's already there so what we will do is use form and uh, okay is it coming use form no i need to restart the app it's better that i will do it later so inside this we need to specify the object okay like what is my resolver so if you want to specify some validation criteria then we can use jord jord is actually a library to validate the schema and we already have a login user schema if you remember we were using that so here i will be using uh, jord resolver and i will specify my schema which i think we already have created this user schema right and this use form okay i need to because this is a new library i have created so either i need to restart this typescript stuff but sometimes it doesn't work so this use form is actually coming from uh react hook forms so let's see if it works okay and this jord resolver is coming from hook form jord resolver okay now i think it is giving us something method okay and then what all we are going to get from the method reset handle submit and form state all these are predefined i'm not doing any rocket science like you have already worked on this is submit successful all these things are coming from this use form hook here i'm just specifying my validation criteria using passing the same login user schema which we were using and here i can use, use effect hook it's all pure react component because it's a client only component so i can use the hooks i can use the red apps all the state management library if is submit successful is false 
is if it is true then just do the reset form right form submission is successful we can reset our form we can using use effect and here we can just this is submit successful okay and store also we need to reset that we can do with the help of this store initially when you're loading the component okay and here inside this what do we have is we have simple form component which we need to build okay so let's build the simple form component here first of all what we need to do we need to use form provider yes simple provider and we will pass methods okay inside the form provider what all we need to pass so like on submit method so inside form provider we can just use this form okay let me clean this it won't work like this on the on submit so what will happen is we are going to handle form submit and we are going to write our own method on submit handler and on submit handler this is the method we are going to define okay post on submit handler when you are submitting the form with some value i'm going to handle it something like this like uh, i'm going to call this function login user function and just pass values okay and these values will be of some type login user input type which we already have defined a type login user input we have we were using this type earlier i will just try to import this so const on submit handler this is of type submit handler of type login user input and then this function i'm going to define this function will be just uh, handling of these things so async function login user input login user function and here you will access all the, the values values is type of login user input and this is like a async function you have created and you already have access to the store so when you when you are submitting the form set request loading true i mean this is just like a toggling and all those things you are doing and you will put all these things inside a try catch here you are submitting the form make the exact call and pass these values okay so this is my own submit handler what is wrong with this so here i'm submitting this handle on submit on submit handler email and the password okay submit handler email password is not assignable to parameter type field values using the following property email password login user input has both the values this is email and the password okay i will just check what is this uh, particular error is talking about so this is a simple form right inside this form let's add some classes and then we will write this form so this is our class name i can just make the the background background gray or something i will just fix these colors i'm just trying to make the, these i need to make these all nices adding 8 space vertical y vertical space uh, space 5 adding 8 okay and then inside this i'm going to create a form input component custom form input component that will take care of all these things of validating and all these things email this name is email and type is email so let's consider that we are creating a custom form component which takes these three props right form input label name and type so let's say we have email and the password there are two form fields we have label is password name is password 
and type is password simple login form form input we are going to create okay and then there is a submit button right simply we are going to create a login button that will also take care of the loading showing the spinner whenever the loading is happening so there is a loading we are going to pass as a prop store dot is request loading request loading true or false and here i can just show text color so it's like a reusable component i'm going to add so text color is a class text q 600 okay this is a login button component rest you can just say okay if you are not logged in do the sign up and all so we are going to create this uh, form input component and the login button component so i want to have all these three custom components form input component and the login button component so let's go to the components and there i can see form input component so form input component is a simple uh, reusable component i wanted to build this is let's say what are the props which we are going to pass in this form input component form input props it's like a type script uh, react types to component we are going to create so label is required this is like a props we are creating string uh, name is required and then type type is optional if you are not passing type then i will consider the type as a text so const form input and once this is done we will also check uh, how this uh, looks like. okay and i will just update some tailwind classes so it can look some something nicer form input component input props okay and this is what i'm passing and this is the arrow function and this is what component is returning okay this is our form input component so here i will have a label being passed and the label will be passed and the type if you are not passing the type then i will be considering the type default okay and here i will just get all these things from form context so we are using the hook forms register form state all these things it will be coming from uh, use form context you can see it is giving us the form state and errors and this is how we are going to register each and every form field so it's going to be a little simple implementation do class name if you have any classes to add and here we will add uh, input text field first of all label because we are passing this label so we'll just create uh, the label tag with and pass all these classes needed for it label html4 and that is for the name here we need to pass for which field we are passing html4 class name class name is the text what is the color b 600 and margin bottom 3 inside this label we will just pass the label props and then here we are going to do the input text field so input type type we are getting if uh, you are not passing type then it is going to be type text placeholder let's keep it empty and then class name uh, we can just put a class block display block which is full rounded to excel rounded to excel upper is appearance none focus outline all these things focus outline none and vertical it is two and horizontal it is four and then how we do the registration so this is here we can just spread it and just register this particular field register name this is our simple input text field okay and if there is an errors because there can be errors right if there is a validation errors if error contains this particular name and and then we need to show this particular uh, messages span class name and 
how we will show error dot name dot message as string okay this didn't work this will be optional okay this work and inside class name we can just show this uh, till in class text thread 500 text thread 500 text text extra small and um, padding of one display block a simple input field component okay export default form input component a simple reusable form input component so similarly we have a login loading button also so i will try to build the same loading button component also i really like it so what is the type so loading so it's a loading button props so what are the props we are passing loading true and false so that is here that is required to to let this button component know that do you need to show the button loading or not button color string okay i mean these are the what you can customize on the button text color string and do you have any children because it's going to be a react dot react node react node component react uh, node okay these are the types okay then you can just create a simple component export from loading button button component of type react functional component react dot fc and it is accepting this loading button props loading button props and there are some defaults yes uh, simple loading button and here you can specify okay what is the text color if you are not passing it then i'm just going to override it text white button color okay this is button color and button color i'm going to override bz yellow bz yellow 400 and if you are passing children and then if you are passing loading i will just consider that as false okay simple button component here what you are going to return from it so this is button type submit because it's a submit button first of all right and here what do we have in the button if it is loading so first of all here we are going to just tweak if it is loading then you are going to show some spinner behavior otherwise you are going to show something else inside a span tag if it is not loading then you are going to render the children uh, what happened to this okay i may have missed something if it is loading then do this otherwise do this did i miss something so this is inside button so we run the case paste so it's a ternary operator if it is loading then just uh, use the string okay strange it was just reporting that we didn't put anything there so here we can just say there is a spinner i can use okay and inside a spinner i can just pass uh, because it's a default spinner component and if it is not spinner then i can render the children component spinner and you can just span your message i i mean if we can customize this a little bit more i will do it offline so this is how you can show a simple button component okay uh, then you can just export default button components specify the customization but this is how you will do it you will also customize the classes which are being passed to this button component here you can just customize it in your own way class name 
so let's say justify center justify center and it's going to be flex uh adding vertical three rounded lz outline none so some kind of a tailwind classes we can add so these are all the button components now we can add them inside a login form component i will do this and then the same we are going to do for the registration so i'm not going to do the same implementation for it so this is the the loading button first of all it's a loading button so just import that or i will just see what is the the name exactly i put there so export const it should be export default so we can just use export loading button and i can use this loading button in my login form login form loading button that's it okay why it is complaining loading button children is missing okay yeah that is correct we are not specifying the children so inside the the login lo loading button so it's a, like a simple loading form what do you do is you will just simple pass the props loading button why it's complaining put a message login and why it is complaining again okay there is no form form is closed now i will just format it okay my simple login form is done right now let's see how it looks like on the ui and then we will do the sign up form okay so this is our app application running it's a simple login page this is a simple home page doing nothing much and here register we are going to build this page and this is our login page right let's try to fix some styling for the login and then we will build our register page okay i try to decrease the width here and now let's change the the background for this box this is width full and i'm just going city dark let's say if i just make it like 500 okay this doesn't look good i mean i'm just not uh, putting much effort on uh, the styling things here so i will just make it is like uh, background white if i just make background white then uh, how it is going to look like let's see that so here is our login form I will just make uh, a crown white 200. Okay, this is still a little bit better than that. And there is a login button now that is totally disappeared. We need to have some. So, this is our button, right? So we need to put some styling for our login button like what is the class we are going to put here and inside login button we can specify text blue 600 okay now oh, let's pass our class text three now this look a little bit better i just changed the class and the color we are passing okay so what will happen now so when i just try to see if you can see when we are loading the page on every page request it is making a call to api user me that is returning 400 because currently we are not logged in so i will just try to log in and i think it will just throw you can see the loading state and currently we are not handling the error right so if the handle response is returning uh, user not found then we have to handle that first of all like handle error response and then we need to redirect that to the same page okay so let's see what is happening when i do the login here you can see a simple form hello at the gmail.com and when i do the login let's see the network calls 
what actually happening that will help us to debug things and here i did the login right so when you do the login uh, here i'm getting post and it is getting successful you can see i'm getting a message successful and i got the response back and you can also check the headers here inside headers you can see the cookies are set logged in true token is this so we just need to handle this in the right way so that we can just proceed to the profile page and inside profile page we can show the user information so let's check the profile page because we are already logged in and here it is saying not found some errors let's try to debug this so here you can see uh what we are have what we are doing on the profile page so this page.tsx we got the cookies we got the token and it is all happening at the server side api get user auth token that is making call to this api api users me and it is just passing that and then trying to check if the user exists and it is doing a handle response inside handle response we are just checking here i can just try to console.log response and try to see what we are getting okay i will just try to log it uh, currently it is just throwing this data error not found handle response line 18 handle response line 18 it is returning it is just throwing this particular thing let's see if i'm just throwing error so let's see if there is an error uh we can just it out. okay So let's see what response, what error we are getting. So that is important to understand like uh, is it the API is failing or what. So currently because I know API should, would, will fail, we haven't written the middleware. But uh, it's all about knowing things like what is uh, breaking right now. So here is a response and uh, I think the response is not being returned because if you look at this particular API. Here what we are doing we are checking if x user id is there and that is possible only with the middleware this request will go to the middleware then middleware will check the this cookies uh, authorization cookies and then it will add x user id in the headers for the same request object before forwarding it to the api routes so in that case it should just return you this response message with the status code 401 content type and all okay that's why this is breaking that is the one possible cause and that's why you can see this uh, big lines coming on the console so what we are going to do is before doing this we can just try to create a simple method which is going to so what is happening here is inside a profile page.tsx get api user and here this handle response right because it's we know this api will break even after user is logged in so we need to write a middleware that will deal with all these situations okay so let's create a middleware.ts so and registration form is kind of simple as a login we are not going to create it specifically middleware.ts and inside middleware we are just going to add all sort of things because we cannot keep the middleware empty otherwise our next js will return an error okay so we are going to do is export a sync a sync function middleware this is just a simple handler we have and it is going to access the request object of uh, next request okay now what we are going to do inside this so, so let's say we have a token is of uh, type string or undefined and if so what do we have is if request dot cookies dot has if this has contains already the token then we are good then token equal to what do we have is request dot cookies dot get token dot value and then we need to just get the bearer token because it's a bearer token so we need to remove that string from it right if that is there otherwise what we are going to do is 
request.headers.get authorization it can be coming inside authorization or it can be coming inside authorization header so we will just try to do the substring and get the token so token will either be coming inside a simple cookies token or it may be coming as a authorization inside headers so we are checking both the things are you sending the uh, this token inside the headers or inside cookies and then we will just try to do some checks if uh, you are trying to access the particular login page or something like that so what we are going to do here we are just going to do some if, if else statement like const response equal to next response dot next so this we are going to return but on some conditions so here we can just do a try catch So inside error, there can be a, there can be an issue while doing a verify and all right. So in try if token is there. So what we need to do is, if token is there, then we need to get the. We need to decode and we need to get the. We need to verify the token right. So await. So there is already a method verify JWT and it takes two argument. I mean it takes just a token. But what it is going to return it is going to return this subscriber like the user id which we just put inside that so this is just a type and it is going to return us this subscriber is a user id here okay and then we what we will do is response dot headers dot set and what is the the header value we are expecting in these uh, endpoints so we, i will go to app login profile wait inside the users and i'm expecting x user id okay so in the middle where i will set x user id value to something so here x user id so this is how what we are doing is we are trying to set the value to this this subscriber is actually user id and uh, what we are doing is if there is authenticated user authenticated request dot user so do we have authenticated request we already got the request object right inside that also user we can set this value inside authenticated request dot user i can set this id as a user id okay authenticated request is we already have an access to the request object which is a next request and inside the request we are setting the user object on top of that if there is an error then what we will do is we will just redirect it to the login page that you just passed uh, wrong authentications and all and inside this error we can always check what is your url so what is your current url request dot next url dot path name these are the checks you can perform path name dot starts with if this path starts with api that means you are trying to access the api but you are not logged in so what we will do is we will just return you return uh, get error response and we will set a status code 401 and we can say hooker is invalid simple right otherwise we will just redirect a login page so simple bad authentications and you will redirect you to the login page so if you are already a if we, if we got authenticated user so we are still in the try catch so what else we need to do inside a method let's say we got off user that we can get from authenticated user dot user this is our auth user we have received I will try to fix this typing and here if auth user is null I mean sometimes it can happen if auth user is null then what we can do is return next response dot redirect I think there is a method redirect and that will redirect you to the new URL okay you can specify where you want to redirect so that is just an argument 
some custom argument you can specify by dot okay and if uh, let's say you are logged in right you have the valid authentications and token and still you are trying to access the login page that is not right right so we need to redirect user to the profile page for that okay this is auth user it should be auth user so if there is auth user and you are trying to the, the, the next url contains a login that means you are already logged in you need to go to the profile page not to that and here we can return response if you are returning response that means everything is good and we can move forward so here uh, we most of the time we will be just adding this x api x user id to the request and we will forward it this request to the route handler like api users give me my own profile something like that so this is a simple middleware we have created so to fix this typescript you can create a custom authentication request which contains a user object so it's like how we define the types for the request dot user so i you can extend the next request and do it now i think we should be able to do something now so this is the login okay so this is our simple login route okay now let's see what is happening now so okay login is gone and i got the the payload preview and then it is taking me to the profile there i was just uh, making this api call i think because when you go to the profile i am uh, making api call to the get auth profile and then it is redirecting me to here which is again login with error bad auth so that is something happening with this middleware we are not able to validate this token then only this is possible right when you are trying to hit uh, this api user me it is redirected with the status 401 that means whatever the token you are passing inside header so this is a, there should be a request object because this call is internally happening so let's see what is happening here because this is a server component when you navigate to the profile it's all server things which are happening here so we cannot just intercept uh, what is what the api call that is returning but from here we can understand lots of things we can just try to console things and try to see what is the error so that is stuck here on data root errors so let's see if we got the the token in the the request for the profile component inside the profile page.tsx so here first of all we are passing token and i'm just going to go to this thing and here x user id do we have this user id i think we are not uh, getting this user id from the middleware console.log user id that means whatever the token we are passing that is not getting processed so here let's try to see this if we get the console.log token let's try to print the, to the token if it starts with the login then we will just return otherwise here we are checking api users api user logout here we are just verifying the token so i think we need to pass the secret also okay secret is already getting fetched gwt secret key gwt dot verify and this should return as the data okay that's the error right i'm not returning anything return verify so that should return with the payload right i can try to log it or something like that so verify gwt gwt secret this is the token and secret so this will give me uh this will give me the the payload using which i have created this token now i will just try to log in again let's see if we get any success yet login profile bad auth and try to see what is happening so here we got the keys we got the token everywhere that means token is being passed properly 
and here we are doing a verification right the verification is happening here i think i'm not getting this uh, this is not returning any data okay this typing i can skip this is creating problem and here i'm trying to print uh, subscriber value okay so that should be coming as a object inside that i'm trying to get the value so if we just try to see how we are decoding how we are creating the token payload sub okay so this is what we were using to create a token so this token again came back jwt secret key and we are just doing a verify so jwt dot verify should return me the the data let me try to see what we are getting in the verify i'm missing small mistake it is there and we'll just try to fix it it's all debugging so i think it should be returning a promise then it should be await jwt dot verify but i'm just wanted to validate it once so it's a hello at the rate gmail.com okay so here is email and the password this is my token is it going till there or not so here we need to use some kind of a debugging skills so here i was trying to debug this in the middleware i just put an error block on the verify and what i did i got this strange error and the error is your token is getting expired so when we are doing a verification your token is getting expired that means you cannot do the login it it will always throw 401 token is invalid and why that is happening that i'm still trying to decode because verify jwt this is where we are verifying and this is where we are signing the token and here i have even specified expires in 10 hours so that's not uh, good giving any effect even if i just do expires in and i think that's a string so let's say 10 hours means whatever the token you are generating that should have an expiry of 10 hours and when i try to see this here the expiry is not not that right so what it is it is saying uh, 2014 to 4 and this is 10 44 okay yes it is 10 hours of expiry you can see june 14 and then uh, this is june 14 i mean it should be wednesday little strange okay expiry should be uh from the current hours right so we need to fix that uh, logic how we are setting the expiry for the sign in token so jwd dot sign here we need to pass the expiry from the current date so that our token should not get expired so we need to fix this particular logic of setting up the expiry for the token and uh, it should start working as expected okay so after uh, debugging a little bit deeper i mean my token is valid i saw that you can see i put the expiry 152 and 52 so there is a one hour of expiry then when i try to see uh, what is there because this is the custom exception i'm throwing that is the problem we should not use the custom messages if we don't know the impact so this error is of type any and what is this error this error is something uh, wrong the as runtime does not support node.js crypto module okay so because we are just using jwt verify and next JS somehow doesn't support the uh, under underlying library that's what it is reporting right so if i just try to see things now we'll do the fix for it so here you can see the same error right does not support node just crypto module so now let's fix that and uh, then we will just validate all the implementation okay so what is the final fix i cannot use json web token with the next js so that's a good news i need to change the library so what i will be doing i will be using this josh i will just check the implementation how it really works it's all about creating the token and verifying the token okay it's also work in the similar way so what we will do is we will just change this token library 
inside the token we are now going to use uh, so here it is the library right we are creating the token and the decoding the token so here we are going to use josh library to create a signed token and verify it okay so we have fixed the validation error uh, that uh, token expiry error by introducing another library now we will just try to see this end to end we have updated our uh, middleware right and i just put the console logging it's all about troubleshooting because sometimes you end up using a wrong library which doesn't doesn't support okay now this is our simple middleware which is validating all those things and finally if auth user is there then it will help you it will allow you to process this api request of fetching the user here we are getting x user id and then checking and just logging the user and returning the response okay so now let's see all these things in action so i will just try to first uh, create a user okay so this user is already there i can just do hello one okay this is the email and i will just try to do the login with this hello one at the rate gmail.com i got the token so you can see this is the session token these are the cookies two cookies and then i will just try to access this request give me my own profile okay and here i got 200 okay i got my own profile so this is what we are going to trigger once user is logged in this from the youth session hook we are making this call to fetch the current user profile so we will do the logout and here i will just try to do the login and you can see we have a simple toaster and i can see the profile page okay so this is like a simple demo i wanted to show and this is all login and the register so i also populated a simple register form based on the login rest i will share this code there are lots of uh, troubleshooting we have done so i hope this is helpful in end-to-end -end learning how we are using all these libraries and how we are pairing up all these things together to build a simple authentication this could have been done in less amount of time but when you are doing from scratch and explaining each and everything thing it takes time i hope this is really helpful you can just play around with this i will push the code for it